thought I'd unbox the thing outside, uh, a bit more space. Um, and the purpose of this video is uh, twofold. Firstly, obviously to show you how to put the uh, e-bike together using the Voila Mart uh, uh, electric wheel. And secondly, to give you some pre-buying pre advice. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things to consider if you're going to put your own e-bike together. Um, and uh, I'll go through some of the gotchas, some of the uh, things you want to keep an eye on, things you want to look out for. The first thing is when you buy a, an electric wheel, for example, with a, a built-in motor hub, um, is, is the gap between the forks. Uh, sometimes they don't tell you how wide the motor is, fitting at the front or the rear, um, and you need to ensure that your forks have got the right spacing between them. Now, you can move the forks out slightly, but you don't want to put too much stress on the forks because a critical part of the whole bike infrastructure, eh? Uh, so, the gap between the forks, very critical, take a look at that. Secondly, if you're fitting this on your front forks, or indeed in your rear forks to a degree, but mainly your front forks, if your front forks are aluminium, you're going to have to strengthen those forks because the torque, even at 250 watts, is enough to weaken the front forks. Now, just put a magnet on the front forks and you're not sure whether they're aluminium or steel, and if they connect, obviously it's steel. Uh, but all is not lost if you've got aluminium forks, and I'd suggest it, even though you've got steel forks, is to put some torque bars on the front, which stiffen uh, the, and spread the load over the fork so it's not all um, centred on those two little uh, lugs at the front where the axle uh, uh, seats itself. Um, so so that, that's, that's, that's something to be aware of. Uh, torque, torque bars. Um, power. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff on power uh, that you can consider. Obviously, you know, the battery needs to have the uh, adequate uh, current to deliver the power you're requiring off your 250 250 watt. That's that's the one that we're dealing with today. But you can go up to 3,000 watts. Obviously, the legalities here depend on your jurisdiction. Uh, in the in Europe, um, it's 250 watts, and a whole bunch of other regulations that the motor must be stamped with 250 watts. The pedals must have an assist mechanism, which. Uh, ensures there's somebody on the bike pedaling. You don't have to put any force on the pedals, but the little hall sensors on that should indicate that somebody is there in order for the power to be released. And there's also a speed limiter in Europe, which must kick in at about 18 kilometers. I'll put a link in the, in the description, because I don't want to lose you now on talking about regulations, but if, if it's Europe, Europe, I'll put a link in the description. So I, this is a 250 watt, so it has the potential of being completely road legal uh, in Europe. We still don't require insurance in Europe, which is fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't have insurance, but we don't require insurance. So it's kind of like a halfway house in Europe. You've got some freedoms, but you've got other things locked down. There are other things about um, not having a, a twist grip throttle. You must have uh, some sort of uh, mechanism which is uh, uh, user control with a speed function. Um, obviously, if you want to put these things together separately, the wheel from the controller, there's a whole bunch of other considerations as well. Uh, if you want to go down that route, I'm not saying don't do it, but you're going to have to deal with, you know, perhaps controllers which talk about, uh, you know, the uh, functions of the various leads coming out of them in terms of uh, Chinese or Cantonese. And I've gone through a number of these controllers, looking at them, trying to diagnose them. Uh, and if you don't want to go through that uh, exercise, then get a matched controller and a wheel at, at the same time. There's, um, if you do go down this, this route with your own controller and your own wheel and trying to match it up together, uh, then if you've got a great description on what these, these are for, and there's everything from you know power assist uh, detection, there's uh, power from the battery, there is uh, brake detection, there's LED, there's the three hall effect sensors uh, on, on the motor itself, usually those are yellow, green and blue and those are fairly standard, there's the power uh, a bunch of other things as well, um, break, um, uh, braking, um, regenerative braking and all sorts of stuff. But if you want to go down this individual route, you might need yourself uh, a logic analyzer to determine what's coming out of these wires and what's coming out when it should come out. There is also a dedicated logic analyzer for e-bikes. Uh, this thing here, oh it's just switched on, how did I do that? Oh. Um, it's called a, an electro car brushless motor controller tester. So if you do go down the independent route, uh, the uh, mix and match with the uh, e-bike motor and the controller, you may want one of these logic analyzers to make sure the Hall effect sensors are working at the right time and all of the other bits and bobs uh, that require input from the microcontroller are giving out the signals that you require. Um, 
Now, once you've got your um, your uh, wheel and your controller uh, sorted out, you're going to need a battery. Uh, I'll get some batteries that I've made up already. <coughs> Uh, here's a bunch of batteries in uh, various states of uh, completion. Um, NCR 18650Bs for those of you who are into these uh, things, uh, lithium ion cells. Um, now, uh, to, to get the right battery, obviously the voltage, and you'll know the voltage when you buy the uh, motor. And you'll also know the power that the, uh, the maximum power that the battery, uh, the motor is expected to. Uh, to get from the battery. So take the 250 watt that we're dealing with here today, 250 watts, 36 volts nominal, which is the kind of the average or halfway point of a 50% charged uh, 36 volt battery, 42 volts on the high end. Uh, take that 250 watts, divide by 36, and that gives you about 7 amps. So your battery must be able to deliver 7 amps. Now I've got 2S. Um, sorry, 10S, 2P here, each of these cells can deliver uh, about 7 amps itself. So I've got a headroom of about 14 amps at 36 volts from these batteries. Um, uh, and, and obviously if you're going for a 1000 watt motor, uh, then at 36 volts, then it'll be four times the current that would be uh, what the battery would be expected to be, have to deliver at peak load. Now, you'll find that the higher the power you go, usually the pressure, the voltage goes up. So usually around 1,000 watts, you're dealing with 48 volts, and the maths change uh, slightly. But that's what you need to be looking at. And now once you've got your battery sorted out, you're going to need somewhere to put it. You're going to need somewhere to put the controller. Um, there are various cases. There are uh, silverfish cases. There are uh, bags that hang under the crossbar. There are frog-type cases. Um, all of those are, are options. Um, and you're going to need to waterproof for an awful lot of this as well. Uh, get caught in a torrential downpour and uh, you short circuit one of these batteries. Now many of the batteries, and you should check this, should have short circuit protection in them so that if you do get a problem or somebody cuts through the wires, it doesn't uh, allow your uh, battery to explode. It cuts the load immediately, so it's very important. The other thing I would recommend, sorry for the labouring on the batteries, but that's my pet subject, uh, I, I would make sure that your uh, battery has balanced char charge capability so that the cells are balanced uh, when they, they reach their final charge. Uh, if you don't do that, you may get to the, the position where one of these cells is, is, is out of balance, so it's only 50% full uh, or higher, more to the point, uh, and it reaches full charge ahead of the others and it cuts off the uh, rest from charging, you could end up with a battery which is only 50% charged because one of the cells has hit the peak and cut off. Now balanced charging does help to a degree but it only sucks off a little bit of a drain current and it can't always keep up with the, the, uh, the drain required from large cells. Anyway, that's the battery side of things. Let's take a closer look at what we get in the Voila, Voila Mart box. A hundred quid as I say, seems like very good value on the face of it, only when we put it together will we find out. Well, here's the wheel. I'll just stick this down here for the time being. Um, let's go into the, the box here with bits of bobs in it. Let's take a look what's in there. Um, just to recap on what you get. A manual, which is great, and it is in reasonable English, which is uh, to be commended. Um, I'll photograph this and stick it at the end of the video so you can read through the manual if you're that committed. Um, you get a tyre. This is a 26 inch wheel. Um, just a word on wheels. Uh, the wheel size, I mean, if you're flexible and you're going to seek a donor bike and you don't have one, the, um, the smaller the wheel size, um, the, the less uh, torque is required to get the wheel going. So at 250 watts, 26 inches fine. If you put a, a larger wheel, say a 29 inch on there, it may, uh, it may not have the torque to give you that acceleration you're looking for. But you get a tyre, and uh, I've ordered a few of these wheels in my, in my time. You don't always get um, uh, uh, an inner tube, which is good. Um, but let's take a look inside this box. One other thing about the batteries um, that I didn't mention uh, is 
that the capacity of the battery is obviously, you know, your range anxiety, as they say in Tesla circles. Uh, this is these are the highest uh, uh, capacity batteries on the market. Now, some of you will say, well, what about the NCR 18650G? And I, I can hear you saying it now. Well, yeah, they do exist, but try and get, get a hold of some. They're as rare as hen's teeth. Uh, Tesla snapped them all up. Uh, so the, the 3400 is, is the uh, probably the best battery you can you can get a hold of for both uh, current and, and capacity. So take a look inside this box. Okay, this looks like what is this? This is a this. I'm, I'm not not an expert, but this looks to me like a the ring that goes around the crank, which then detects whether the crank is turning. The, the pedal. Yeah, there's another bit that goes with it. The pedal assist. Uh, it is magnetic. Um, and when that's turning, it will detect that there's somebody on the bicycle. It's just kind of like a dead man's handle. As I say, you don't actually have to put any pressure on the crank. You don't have to be actually assisting the rear wheel. As long as it's, it detects there's somebody on the bike pedaling, then that's fine. Some of these don't work too well. You could be pedaling, holding your bike along, walking it, and suddenly it will trigger, and suddenly your bike will take off. So be careful on the quality side of things. This is like a cable wrap, a cable guide. Um, Oh yeah, brake handles. Yeah, one of the things on the control I didn't mention. Um, yes, you do. You, you do need your brakes, and there they are. There, there's the. There's the um, what do they call those things? I can't remember. But those are recesses to put the brake cables in there. The brake. The brake uh, uh, terminating uh, lugs, screws, and also switches as well. So if you pull one of the brakes or either of the brakes, the controller is alerted via the cable there. Two pins. Three pins. Is it? Two pins and it says cut the power so it's not trying to work against you um, oh. okay a um, couple of handles uh, this is the one that uh, is the speed uh, setting handle I'm not sure how this works I think you must press it and sequence through uh, the various uh, power settings uh, low low medium and high is it yeah oh empty oh this is an indicator on there so I don't know if that's that's probably just the power setting then, just hold that down for power, I don't know. Um, just to match up the handlebars, um, and here's the controller. Oh, and some cable ties. Oh, fair enough. Um, oh, quite a small controller. Uh, and again, if you're buying the controller separately, make sure it's matched. Make sure the voltage, each of these controllers in these boxes over here will have... Um, they use the same box for various voltages and various powers. There should be an indication on there what voltage and what power uh, the controller can handle. Now, oftentimes there'll be an, an overspec of these things. Um, they may have regenerative braking uh, facility in there. They may have an LCD output uh, with some sort of you know um, protocol that uh, the Chinese think is a standard. You may not use all of these, and don't be worried if you've got a few left over. The important ones, obviously, are uh, the power from uh, the battery, um, the power to the hub motor here, and as you can see, that that's pretty straightforward, um, and then the three Hall effect sensors, so it know the controller knows when to uh, activate the current to each of the uh, uh, the coils. Um, so that that's that's the uh, that's the sum total of what you get in the package, and I must admit, for a hundred quid, uh, it doesn't seem too bad. Uh, you're going to have to ante up on uh, the box for the battery, maybe a case for this. Oh no, it came with a case. I saw a case. Hold the phone. And voila, <laughs> as uh, voila Mark might say. Um, Yeah, this is uh, too small to contain a, a reasonable sized battery. Well, maybe I don't know. Who knows? But I'm guessing that's for the, that's actually for the uh, for the controller. Um, and again, not waterproof, so you need to be careful of this. Um, you know, getting a fully waterproof solution is quite quite difficult. But anyway, on to the build. Okay, this is. Oh, get up there. Okay, this is my donor bike. Bought it about 20 years ago. Didn't use it that much and stuck it in the shed. I don't tend to throw things out. Um, you need to get this wheel off. Uh, just a word about 
front and back wheel. I didn't cover this earlier. If you're worry, wondering whether you should go for rear wheel drive or front wheel drive, well, there's plenty of websites out there that will give you, you know, much better advice than I. But broadly speaking, uh, if you uh, need to change a, a puncture on a, on a wheel, I think generally speaking the front wheel is easier to do. Let's face it, it's about convenience a lot of the time. Um, the second uh, advantage about front wheel is that with uh, a crank turning you've got all wheel drive, right? You can pedal the rear one and you've got the front one going uh, as well. Um, uh, weight distribution is a big thing. I would prefer to put the battery to the opposite end of where the hub motor is just to spread the load out a little bit so bear that in mind when you're doing it a lot of people go for the um, rear wheel drive I mean you're kind of dragging yourself along uh, whereas this is pushing you along and um, as you know um, the only proper cars in the world are those with rear wheel drives um, front wheel drives are just go-karts aren't they so I've got to get this wheel off and uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you <laughs> I haven't checked. I'll see if the damn wheel fits in the in the spokes. Oh, I should listen to myself sometimes. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to finish this today. I'm going to get it up and running. That's the plan anyway. I won't be making it all neat and tidy with everything all nice and pretty and with a bow on it. You can probably tell from the, the filing system behind me that's not my forte. But let's try and get this thing up and running today. So let me swap this wheel out. Back with you in a second. Now, I don't know if there's a direction on this thing, I'm going to have to RTFM, so let me, let me do that now. Well, the, the, the pictures in the book don't reflect um, the actual model uh, that we're using here, but it does show here uh, that they want the uh, cable on the right-hand side. I, I, don't, I think, you know, what, what, what matters is that you can actually reverse the direction of the motor through the controller. So if it's going in the wrong direction, do one of two things, switch a couple of cables over, or uh, you can just take the uh, the wheel out and turn it around in 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 the uh, in the other 180 degrees. But it does show, sorry, it shows the the, the cable coming out of the left hand side. So we'll, we'll do that. I'm going to give myself an awful lot of room to get these uh, this axle in. Let's hope and pray. <laughs> this is this is the. Uh, we'll fit the tire later, obviously. I just really just, oh wow, this looks like it's going to go in. Um, Yes, it does. Well, let me. Yes, superb. Wow, it does fit, or does it? Come on, get in there. Okay, small problemo. Um, this uh, this fork, um, I think it's a lock washer or lock pin or something. It kind of uh, stops the. Uh, axle from turning, it's just too wide to fit into the uh, recess in the fork, so um, it's not going to go down flat, so I'm going to have to get the, uh, the old electric sandpaper out. Uh, stay tuned. Well, very rare that I fix something the first time around, I'll tell you. And that seems to be a, a peachy fit. And it's a peachy fit on both sides. Uh, so, uh, we're good to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, brief update. Um, nice and tight. This twist grip on this grip, handlebar grip on the left. Uh, I've got the uh, brake mechanism on for the back brake, uh, which has got a second connector to uh, tell the controller to shut off. Uh, these obviously need tightening up. Uh, same on the right hand side. The um, the, twist, the grip on the right hand side is in fact a twist grip, I hadn't realised, I thought maybe this was a selector of speed as I have on the other bikes, and the indicator there is just uh, full, half and empty, so there's a, an indication of uh, the voltage on the battery, so 36 volts would be 50% full, 42 volts would be full, and what is that, well, two, six, about 30 volts would be empty, and that doesn't need pushing on with any lubricant, that just um, slides on. Uh, with uh, a retaining bolt, uh, an Allen retaining bolt at the bottom. All right. Well, all the connection, all the bits and pieces that came with the kit are now on the bike, apart from this thing, which has fallen off, and that ain't going to stay on. I mean, maybe you want to put some glue on that to keep it on. That's a bolt cover for the uh, right-hand side. No, yeah, the left-hand side uh, nut, axle nut. Now, here's a controller, and first the good news. Uh, we've got the full function controller in this kit, silver type with full functions, and there's the black and the easy type. Well, it seems to have the same number of connections to me anyway. Uh, right, now, um, are we in focus? Yes, we are. Okay, um, there's the hall connectors, as you can see here, and the bullet type connectors, which is fine. Uh, we have the power to the battery uh, bullet connectors. I'm going to switch those out for T. Dean's connectors. Um, now, so you know what those are. Now we also have the throttle control which is this one. This uh, goes to the throttle. Uh, where's the throttle controller? Damn. Okay over here sorry. Oh it's still tied up. Let me let me show you the throttle controller. So this is the wire, the cable that comes out of the the twist throttle control. Um, sorry wrong one. Idiot. Okay here it is. The twist throttle controller there. Um, now we have uh, a, a left brake and a right brake, it doesn't really matter which way around they are, as soon as it detects a short on these two circuits, uh, you've got yourself uh, an engine cut off until you accelerate again without the brake being um, uh, held or, or, or activated. Now, uh, this is, um, what is this one here? Uh, Okay, yeah, this one uh, goes to the hub motor, so that's the connection to the hub motor, um, that's the signalling, that's the power and signalling, um, and then you have this connection here, which is an LED light, I'm not sure what voltage it is, I'll check it out when, uh, probably 8.4 hopefully, which seems to be the stand for electric bikes, so that is um, an LED, and the, only, the last connection is this one here. Uh, it's labelled as K and L, two situations. Situation one, if the motor running the opposite way, uh, connect them and make the op op motor run normal. So I guess this is some sort of reversing switch, uh, just a, a logic on the controller that says move it in the opposite direction. So if your wheel is going the wrong direction, just unplug those two and you should be fine. As you can see, there's only one pin in there, so it's just a short connection, isn't it? All right, um, so that's it, that's a lot. Uh, just to recap one more time, uh, that's um, to the uh, motor, uh, as are these three halls. Um, that's the battery connection, positive and negative. That's that weirdo connection to reverse the direction of the wheels. There's the two brake lever uh, connectors. Uh, that is the uh, LED light that you want to put an LED light on. That is the uh, throttle control, and that is the power uh, pedal assist connector there, the red, where is that one? The red, uh, white, and black. Now, the only thing about this pedal assist is, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting, just how legal do you want to go? Uh, if you just want to twist and go without the, uh, the need to pedal, um, you may want to do something about that. I'm not sure whether the default is uh, to... Uh, not connect it, will it go? And I'll try that out because uh, I really don't want to have to pedal to get it going, uh, but I'll fit it 
so it looks like it's legal. So that's one area of compliance. The second area of compliance is the twist throttle is illegal since about 2014, 2015. Uh, so there really ought to be um, a, a kind of speed selector, you know, slow, medium and fast to be absolutely compliant. But again, you know, your jurisdiction and mileage may vary. But uh, let's get this hooked up to a battery um, and let's see if we can get some, uh, some kinetics. Okay, back in the workshop. All I need to do is uh, put a sensible connection, uh, other than a bullet connection on these. Um, I'm going to put in a, 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 a Dean's connector. So we, we chop the ends of these. And uh, try and get ourselves uh, a little bit of uh, metal to play with. Okay, um, now I always like to put a bit of um, flux on these size connectors and uh, I'll put a heat shrink on as well, I'll cut a couple of pieces off, here we go. And since when I build batteries I always cut off the, uh, the, the uh, Dean's connectors come in long strips, can I find one? Is that one there? No, I can't find one. They come in long strips and uh, they've got a male and a female at the other end. I only use the male connectors on the batteries. Sensible approach and all that. So, um, let's see, I'm talking, I should be firing up the, the soldering iron. Ah, oh, solder would help, wouldn't it? <clears throat> I'll just tin the ends of these. Good idea on these size of connection. I don't know what that is. AWG, I don't know, probably 16, 14 probably. Maybe 14. Get a lot of solder on them. My go-to soldering iron. I've got a bunch of soldering irons. Well, TS100 or whatever it's called. T100. Incredible. Buy one. Thank me later. I've got a tool to do this, a hot air thing. Ah, it's catch is catch can at the moment. Right. Okay, is that one okay? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so now uh, we've, got, um, we've got all the connectors we need to get this thing rocking and rolling. Um, the, uh, my only concern, obviously, is the PAS, the pedal assist mechanism. Uh, do I short that out or can I just leave it unconnected? Um, and will the wheel turn? That's the unknown. So let's get this hooked up. Well, in the best traditions, I think I'll do the power last. Now, this is the connector for the uh, hub. Let's pop that on. Uh, let's do the hall effect. Sorry, hall sensors. My friend who was an assistant called it a hall effect, which I think is just over the top. Find myself doing it myself. Okay, so there's a the green. That's oh, a yellow idiot. There's a the green. Well, these aren't the horse, these are the motors, of course. These are the current for the motors. The horse sensors are in here, in, the, in, in this uh, block connector. Blue. And we want the uh, we want to try the brake mechanism as well, so let's get the uh well oh, still tied up. Damn. Yeah, uh, in, in terms of things I would have done differently, I would have left all of the cables tied up. Uh, I, I undid the hub cable and it's flopping around. Leave it tied up until you actually need it. So here we have um, Two of these, that's it there. Let's put the glasses on. Hold on. Okay, that's the way it goes. 
It's just a quick test, make sure it's all working. Of course, it may not work because I haven't fitted the pads. Play around with that. Okay, now what else we got here? Um, battery, right, accelerator, twist, twist throttle. Ooh. Now here we have, uh, that's the reversible connector to see if the wheel's going the wrong way I can switch that around. That's an LED, I'd like to understand what the voltage is on that, we could do that first actually, couldn't we? Let's plug this sucker in, give it power. Oh, we got some lights. Ah, oh, no, you can't see it. Let me get a camera. It's showing full. Okay. There we go. We have um, we have a full battery, uh, which is good. So it's registering 42 volts on there. Um, don't need this anymore. Uh, turn it off. Right, now, I should be able to twist the throttle and go as it were, but my only concern is I haven't fitted the pass sensor. Now, um, I could clearly short these out, I suppose, but I'm a bit worried about getting the right one. So, let's just see if um, we, we get anything when we twist the throttle. Oh my goodness, wow, there's some power there. Hooray, no pads necessary, bingo. Well, let me get this all, all, gee, how long has that been? That was quick, wasn't it? I'm kind of impressed with myself. I'm good for something. Um, do you know, okay, three and a half hours elapsed, but I've only been doing it part time when I've been running in doing other bits and bobs. So now, I need to get a basket on this and see if we can get some, uh, some locomotion. <coughs> Good. Uh, the motor cut when I pulled the brakes, which is good. Uh, first of all, it's working. It's 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 going forward. Uh, it's working in the right direction. And and secondly, it uh, appears to be underpowered. I don't know what I need to do about that. Maybe that pass thing needs to be uh, assembled correctly. But um, not bad for uh, a couple of hours uh, contiguous work uh, straight out of the box. Um, following this segment you're going to see some still images of the manual if it helps and uh, if any of this has been of any interest I'd appreciate a thumbs up. All the best, cheers!